Hello and welcome back to the Rockwood Academy. I'm your host David Flanagan and today we will continue the complete guide to Parka. Before we go any further, let's set the scene. You are working on your million dollar application and is running in production to hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of users across the world. You need to understand how your application is running from metrics, logs, traces, and profiles. Now, in our first video, we take a look at profiling our application with Parker using the Parker server, the Parker agent, and the Parker server UI. However, we don't really want our profiling information to live in isolation. It becomes a key component in our observability stack. We actually need to consume this information side by side with our metrics, our logs, and our traces. We need a single pane of glass. Now, I hate using that term. Why? Because vendors have thrown it down our faces for the last 10 years trying to sell us snake oil, sell us their products that offer this wonderful, magical experience to understand our application. But really, Grafana is all you need. Grafana can speak to your metrics backend, your logs backend, your tracing backend, and now your profile and back end. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take those Parker profiles, add the Grafana plugin, and how to debug your applications all without leaving Grafana. Let's take a look. Hello, and welcome back to the Rockwood Academy. I'm your host, David Flanagan, and today we will continue the complete guide to Parker. So first, I have a virtual machine on the cloud running the Parka server. You can see here it is configured with a test agent, which has been scraping for a while now, as well as a static config scraping Parka itself. We have a Parker agent, which will list the different profilers. Here we have the Parker agent CPU. So we are consuming CPU samples with the Parker agent for any process discovered via its eBPF probe. We can expand the process list here to see everything that we need to see. Now, of course, we'll see the Parker agent, we'll see our Grafana, and we'll see our million dollar application, just like in the first video. However, we don't want to do this with the Parker UI nor can we do it with the Parker Agent UI. So let's jump over to Grafana. So this is a plain Grafana install with nothing tweaked, configured or installed yet. So we're going to go straight to data sources where we have the big blue button to add a data source. We can add this like so and type Parker. Now, what's really cool here is that Grafana themselves have worked on a core plugin to support Parker as a backend. So you don't need to go and find any third party ones to get them running. You just click go and enter your Parker URL because these are running on the same machine. This is localhost 7070. Now I can hit save and test and we expect a green tick telling us this data source is working. Perfect. And honestly, that's it for the config part. Go to data sources, click add, click save. Could not be easier. So let's scroll up and say, let's explore this data source. Now this is going to function the exact same as the Parker server UI. You get to pick the profiler information that you want. Here we'll grab from the Parker agent CPU profiler, because this is the one doing auto discovery on the node and we'll ask for CPU samples. Now I can just say, show me the last five minutes and click go. And we'll see all of our applications running on the host. If we scroll down, we'll see right at the top, we have my million dollar application. We have the Parker server, my million dollar application, some kernel stuff, Parker. And if we scroll down a little bit more, eventually we'll get to any other application. There we go. Container D, Grafana, Docker D, Lebsy, and so forth.
So currently, we are viewing every single piece of profile information that we have available from the Parka agent. So let's reset our view. Let's go back to the top. Let's filter on executable, where we can get an autocomplete list of all the applications running on the host. If we want to take a look at Grafana, we can type it in and say run. If we want to take a look at the Parker agent, we can do that too. However, what we really want to see is the same application from the first video. That is our million dollar application. So let's click run. And now we have the CPU profile and information for the last five minutes. Now already we can begin to see some problematic functions much like we did in the first video. But let's just jump back over to our terminal. Where we can run a curl HTTP localhost 8080 I equals 2 and J equals 1. Now this should return a response very quickly, but it's not because we have a problem. Our calculator is broken. So let's dig in. Well, first we have this nice little graph that shows us the CPU sample fluctuation. You can switch it to a bar, points, stacked lines, stacked bars, and so forth. All the Grafana features that you're probably familiar with having used it for such a long time. We then have the profile specific information. We can switch to just the top table, just the flame graph, or both side by side. From the search box, we can filter by functions. If we have a rough idea of what we think is wrong, then we can establish that by saying, show me just the addition function. This grays out everything on the right and filters down to the function here. From here, we can focus. And we can see that for the many, many samples of the addition function, most of the time is consumed with this fit function and then mem move, as well as heap pointers and grow slice. So clearly something weird is happening within our addition dependency or Fibonacci function. There's some serious memory allocation or memory movement happening. And then after that, everything kind of shrinks down, showing us that they're not actually consuming that much of our CPU cycle. So let's reset the view. And without the search this time, we'll do the exact same thing. We can see here that our total allocation is up here. We have the serve function, which of course is going to take up more, the majority of the time because it is an HTTP server. And this is true for all of these serve HTTP things all the way down. Now we have some standard stuff happening over here that doesn't really raise any red flags, but of course, addition, fib, sitting here right before the yellow breakdowns, the shrinking of the icicles down the graph, again, highlight that we really need to focus our time specifically on this Fibonacci function. That's when you would go to your code. You would scrutinize every line, look for bugs, run performance tests against it, write new test cases, whatever you need to do to establish what is happening. And all without leaving Grafana. So that's getting started with Parka and the Grafana plugin. Like I said, this is a short and sweet video. It's very easy to get started. You barely have to do anything and you have your profile and information with the rest of your observability stack. So go have some fun. Profile our applications with Parker today. Add the Parker plugin to your Grafana. When you see bad things happening from metrics, logs, and traces, correlate that with profile and information from Parker. Debugging has never been so much fun. Till the next video, we'll see you soon.